This is a tutorial for Danvers and Games Modern Naval Battles Global Warfare, a card game for two to six players. This tutorial is meant to get you up and playing without having to read the rule book. The game includes two types of cards, action cards and ship cards. Your action cards are held in your hands. They are used to attack enemy ships and defend your own ships. Your ship cards are arranged into a fleet on the table and are used to launch attacks. Your goal is to sink the ships of the other players while defending your own ships. Determine player order. The game uses a single six-sided die for all rolls. Throughout the game, you always want to roll high. Each player chooses one nationality. Choose your navy and place all the ships from that navy in front of you. You can tell which nationality a ship belongs to by its flag. The game has nine different navies. Here is how to select the ships that will form your starting fleet. Each ship has a victory point value. In the default game, each player gets to select 25 victory points worth of ships. Place the ships you did not select off to the side to form your reserve ship deck. You will bring reserve ships into the game using the reinforcement rules. In player order, arrange your ship cards into a fleet formation face up in front of you. Each player's fleet can have zero, if there are only submarines in your fleet, one, two, or three rows of ships. Each row must contain at least one ship. If a row does not have at least one ship, all the rows behind it move forward to fill the gap. Submarines are not placed in a row. They are placed off to the side of the fleet. Submarines begin the game in passive mode. That means they are underwater. To indicate that a submarine is passive, rotate its card 180 degrees. Submarines can be identified by the upside down blue evasive symbol. A submarine must be active, right side up, to initiate any type of attack. Submarines can only be attacked by torpedo or ASW, anti-submarine warfare, attacks. Shuffle the action card deck and place it face down in the middle of the table. Each player begins with a hand size of seven cards. Some ships have a command capability, which will increase your hand size. Add the command capability of all your ships to your maximum hand size. As command ships are sunk, your maximum hand size is reduced. How to win. After each complete round of play, check to see if you have won the game. You win when you sink the number of victory points you started the game with. For example, if you start the game with 20 victory points worth of ships, then the first player to sink 20 victory points worth of ships wins the game. You are eliminated from the game if you don't have any ships or submarines remaining in your fleet. Sequence of play. Take turns in player order. Each player performs the following steps in this order during their turn. Actions. This is where you do what you are going to do this turn, including attacks. Then you have opponent defenses where the other players get to try to stop your attacks. If more than one player is attacked, resolve their defenses in player order. A player declares all their defensive actions at one time. Then you resolve attacks, which is seeing what happened. All attacks are assumed to be simultaneous. You then get to discard any unwanted cards and finally everyone gets to draw their hands to full. Not just the acting player, but all players get to draw cards equal to their maximum hand size. Once all players have had a turn, a round of play has been completed. Check for victory. If no one has won, conduct another round of play. During the actions phase, you can reinforce. All action cards have a reinforcement value. You can discard action cards from your hand to use as reinforcement cards. This will let you add ship cards to your fleet. Search your reserve ship deck, choose a ship you want to purchase, and discard that value of action cards. Immediately add the ship card to your fleet. Reorganize fleet. You may now reorganize the ships in your fleet in any way you want. You can't have a third row if you don't have any ships in your second row. If there are no ships in a row, all the ships behind it will just move up. You can also select the active passive mode of your submarines. Ship cards. Each ship card has a variety of text and symbols. Aside from the ship's nationality, there's also the ship's name, class, and years of service. A ship's hull value 
shows the number of hits this ship can suffer before it is sunk. Submarines do not have a hull value. They are either fully operational or sunk. Weapon symbols are used to note the ship's gun mounts, missile launchers, and anti-submarine capabilities. Each symbol allows it to perform a different type of attack. Some ships also have inherent attack and defense symbols that gives them a chance to make that type of attack or stop that type of attack. Ships with these symbols do not need cards to use these attacks or defenses. And of course, each ship has a victory point value, which is used when selecting a ship at the start of the game, bringing a ship into play as a reinforcement, and for determining victory. Action cards. Gun, missile, and torpedo action cards each show which weapon mount your ship must have to launch the attack. There are three types of guns, small, medium, and large. There are two types of missiles, surface-to-surface -surface and cruise missiles. Active submarines can make torpedo attacks on an enemy submarine or ship in any row. Action cards also have a reinforcement point value you can use to bring in ships from your reserve deck. Action cards can always work in several ways. Aside from choosing to use the card to attack, or as a reinforcement card, some cards can help you defend your fleet. The defense symbols, surrounded by red targeting reticles, show which attacks this card can attempt to stop. When you play this card as a defense, roll the number or higher to stop one of the designated attacks. For example, if a small, medium, or large gun attack was coming at one of my ships, I could play this card and roll a 4 or higher to stop the attack. Cards with the hard to stop symbol decrease your opponent's chance to stop this attack. For example, if you attack my fleet with this card, any defenses I play to stop it will be rolled at a minus two. The large number shows how many hits a ship will suffer if the attack succeeds. The attack's range is indicated with green squares. If a card does not show a range, the attack can be made on any row. For example, this card can only hit a ship that is one row away from the attacking ship. How to attack. Each of your ships can only perform one action during your attack step. Attack symbols. To play an attack card, you must have a ship that has the same symbol as the action card. For example, the Gary can play this card because the gun symbol on the Gary matches the gun symbol on the gun combat card. If the Gary uses this attack card, the ship has acted for the turn. Place each attack card next to the ship launching the attack. Some gun combat and missile combat action cards have more than one symbol. The attack card shows the number of mounts needed to launch the attack. These cards can be played with any combination of your ships. If a ship has more than one of the noted attack symbols, it can use each matching symbol as part of its action. For example, you have an action card that needs three missile symbols. The Elliot can contribute its surface-to-surface -surface missile and its cruise missile symbol, but you still need to use another ship with a missile symbol to play the action card. Both ships will then have acted for the turn. Make sure you have the correct number of weapon symbols needed to launch all of your attacks by laying them out on your launching ships. Then, place these cards on the enemy ships you are attacking. Damaging a ship. You inflict the number of hits on a ship shown on the action card. Place the card under the ship to show how many hits the ship has suffered. When the hits equal the whole value of the ship, the ship sinks. For example, you have hit the Ticonderoga with four points of damage. The Ticonderoga is sunk. Place the ship card in your victory pile by your fleet. Attack range. Your ship must be in range of its target to launch an attack. Count the rows from the attacking ship to the target ship. Do not count the row the attacking ship is in. The green boxes on an action card indicate its attack range and a red box shows that a target cannot be hit in that row. For example, this attack card indicates the target must be one row away from your launching ship. This attack must be launched from one or two rows away from your ship. 
A torpedo attack card can target any ship or submarine, and an airstrike attack can target any ship. Large gun special attacks. A few gun combat cards have a special large gun notation. If a ship uses its large gun symbol and it is not stopped, it will sink the target ship. You can play as many defense cards as you have in your hand. They do not count as ship actions. Some action cards and ship cards have a defensive symbol. When any ship in your fleet is under attack by the designated card or attack type, you can use each of these symbols once in an attempt to stop an attack. For example, the Enterprise will stop one airstrike or cruise missile attack on a die roll of three or higher during each opposing player's turn. An action card or ship card can attempt to stop one attack for each number shown. To stop the attack, you must roll the noted number or higher. Example, the Ticonderoga gets a total of two die rolls of three or higher during each opposing player's turn to stop airstrikes and or cruise missile attacks targeting its fleet. Evasive capability. Some ship cards have an evasive symbol. This gives the ship a chance to negate each attack sent against it. Roll a die for each attack. If the die roll is equal to the ship's evasive value or higher, the attack is stopped. Make these die rolls during the defense step of the turn. Submarines always use the evasive value found in their bottom left corner. If the attack is against an active submarine, it rolls its evasive value found in its bottom left corner and if it is passive and the card is turned over, it still uses the number found in the bottom left corner. Action Cards Aside from gun, missile, and torpedo action cards, there are several other cards found in the action deck. Air Support These cards can perform one of three functions, Air Strike, Air Defense, or Anti-Submarine Warfare, ASW. Air Strike Play the card during your action step and declare which opposing ship you want to attack. You cannot target submarines. Roll the card's airstrike number or higher to sink the ship. Air defense. During the defense step, declare the attack you want to stop. If you roll the indicated number or higher, you stop the attack. Anti-submarine warfare. During your action step, declare which submarine you want to attack. You can only attack submarines with this one. Roll the number or higher to sink the submarine. Bomber Strike. A bomber strike lets you launch four airstrikes against one enemy fleet. You, the attacker, get to decide which ship each of the strikes will target. You can target a ship more than once, but you can't target submarines. Discard two action cards from your hand when you play this card. Battle Plan. This lets you either get plus one on all your die rolls during your turn, or select one opposing player to get minus one on all their die rolls during your turn. Declare which option you are using when you play the card. Intel lets you cancel another player's action card. Near miss. Stop any of the indicated attack types targeting your fleet by rolling the near miss number or higher. Superior Tactics. Treat the Superior Tactics card as if it were a copy of any other action card. If played to copy a gun, missile, or torpedo card, you have to have the appropriate unused launcher. For example, I really wish I had a torpedo card. I'll play my Superior Tactics card and poof, now it's a torpedo card. Repair. Remove damage from one or more of your ships. Any ship that has damaged cards removed can't act during your turn. Screening Ship. Select any one attack and retarget it to a different ship in your fleet that is either in the same row or a more forward row. Ship-based air attacks. Some ships have an inherent ability to launch airstrike attacks. They do not need a card. Ships with this symbol can launch one attack for each airstrike number. This is counted as the ship's action. For example, the Enterprise can roll two air attacks on enemy ships in any row, except submarines, each turn. Roll a four or higher for each attack. If the roll is successful, you sink the enemy ship. Some ships have an inherent ability to launch ASW attacks. They do not need a card either. 
Ships and submarines with this symbol can attack any enemy submarine as its action for the turn. For example, the Enterprise can roll one ASW attack each turn. Roll a four or higher. If the roll is successful, you sink the submarine. Of course, the enemy ships can play defenses against these attacks. A ship can either perform airstrikes or ASW as its action for the turn. For example, the Kiev gets either one airstrike on a roll of five or higher, or it can attack one enemy submarine on a roll of five or higher. If the Kiev does not attack with an airstrike or ASW, it can attack with a small gun or cruise missile. Check out the rule book for more details on these rules and for optional rules and scenarios. Here is a quick example of a game turn. On my turn, I decide to play a few action cards to reinforce my fleet. I discard the missile combat card for three reinforcement points, as well as the repair card for one. The repair card is pretty useful, but I don't have any damaged ships right now, and I would rather increase the size of my fleet. I have four reinforcement points, so I look through my reserve deck and choose to add the four point spruance to my fleet. I can now reorganize my fleet in any way I want. I move the Spruants to my second row. I lay out the attacks each of my ships will be making. The Gary and the George Phillip will each make a gun combat attack. I place the attack cards next to their ships to show that I can't use those ships for any other attacks. The Ticonderoga will make a missile attack. The Enterprise will make two air attacks. I place two dice with a four showing to show what my rolls will be. I will place those dice on the ships I target. I also place a die with a six on the Spruance to show the ASW attack roll I need against an enemy submarine. I play the air support card on the table with a die showing a five on it. I turn my Los Angeles submarine over to change it from active to passive since I don't choose to use the sub for an attack. This will make it harder to hit on the enemy's turn. Now that I have laid out all of my attacks, proving that they are all legal attacks with no ship being used more than once, I choose my targets. I choose the USSR. I place my two gun attacks on the front ships since each only has a range of one. I place the missile attack on the front row since it has a range of two but the launching ship is two away from the enemy front row. I place the two air attacks from the Enterprise on the Titan and the Kirov in the second row. Air attacks can go to any row and if the attack is not stopped it will sink the ship. The air attack from the air cover card will go to the Slava and finally the ASW attack from the Spruance will go to the K503 sub. My opponent then checks his hand and plays a near miss to cancel the missile attack on the Druzny. He rolls a five so the missile attack is stopped. He says that the two gun combat attacks hit and places the attack cards under his ship. The Slava, the Kirov, and the Abrolini all have air defense. The Slava and the Abrolini both roll to cancel the attack on the Titan. The Slava rolls a two and the Abrolini rolls a five. Neither succeeds in defending the Titan. I roll a two and miss the Titan with my air attack roll. I remove the die. The Kirov rolls to protect itself. It rolls a five, defeating the incoming air attack. I roll a five against the Slava, sinking it. I add the Slava to my victory pile. Finally, the K-503 rolls its evasion. It needs a six and rolls a three. My ASW attack is a one, missing. After resolving all of my attacks, I choose to keep my near miss card, so I skip the discard phase. Finally, everyone draws their hand to full. This completes my turn. That's all there is to it. Enjoy the game!